Today, we're going to be breaking down the top 25 hardest to master champions in League of Legends in Season 12. So get yourself a nice hot brew, a couple of biscuits, sit back, relax and enjoy the video. So what makes a champion hard to master? Well, there is plenty of factors. It might be obvious things like combos and mechanics that really take some serious practice. Or it could be how hard they are in terms of their macro and their playstyle and how to impact games with them. There's going to be a pretty wide variety of champions included in this video. So let us know if you agree with our choices and drop us a comment on who you think is the hardest champion in the game to master. Before we do get into that top 25 though, if you do want to learn more about any of these champions then feel free to check out our champion pages on our website and of course our desktop app. There you can get set up with builds, runes and everything else that you need to get on your way to master these champions. We also have expert 4 minute starter video guides for these picks too, alongside some more advanced tips and tricks videos for quite a few of these complicated choices included in the video. Click the link in the description to check it all out for yourself. So before we get onto the top 25 there are plenty of other champions that we could also speak about in this video that just missed out as we try to narrow it down to 25 champions. Champions like Aphelios, Kindred, Talia, Kaiser, Silas and even Zeri nearly made the list. So if you main these champions, try not to get too offended, as we all agree that they're also pretty difficult to master. Right, let's get started and in that number 25 position we have Velkos. There really is not too many Velkos mains in general, and those that are honestly tend to be pretty high elo, and very entertaining to watch. Velkos is far more complicated than you might think because when you play him at a basic level you just spam some abilities and hope you don't int. When you get good at him though, you can feel a bit impossible to play against. You can consistently land cues from obscure angles, you can chain together perfect combos with your ultimate and really test your enemy's movement throughout the course of any game. Then you've also got the fact that Velkos is extremely vulnerable, so learning and mastering this champion is also learning about your positioning and understanding your range and your limits. If you can learn all of these things though, you'll have a lot of fun playing this champion, and the more hours you put into him, the higher reward you'll get from it. Next up at number 24 we have LeBlanc. This is a champion that's always been a bit scary in the right hands. No matter the meta, no matter her current strength in the game, a good LeBlanc can always pop off and carry games by herself. So there's a few key things when mastering LeBlanc that really do make the difference though. The first one being limit testing. LeBlanc can either pop squishies like balloons or she can honestly just kind of do nothing. Even if she's super fed, an average LeBlanc can actually have very little impact. However, even if she's not that strong, a good LeBlanc can work wonders. Understanding your damage is a massive part of playing this champion because you're going to need to know if you can dive into backlines and delete those carries at every opportunity. Then you've also got the major factor of LeBlanc's ultimate flexibility and how and when to use this in all sorts of different situations. You've got a quick Q and R for burst, a W and R for mobility and AoE or just a kite and juke, E and R for your literal chain CC providing catch potential and self peel and there are just so many different ways to use that mimic. So a top top LeBlanc player will have to know all of these different things. We also haven't even mentioned farming efficiently too and how many times have you seen a LeBlanc you thought was pretty good but then looked at their farm and saw they were 100 CS down at 20 minutes. Yeah, that happens way too often. Number 23 goes to Jace. And anyone playing this champion below Diamond 2 doesn't really do anything too often. Chase is a bit of a weird one really because he has the ability to bully and stomp planes with his ranged advantage but he's also quite weak and kind of vulnerable during the early game as he's a champion focused entirely on scaling. Learning matchups is one thing but all the different unique ways you have to win these matchups on Jace is pretty insane. You've got to time your movement speed boost with your form shifts to escape abilities, you've got to combo with your EQ perfectly, you've got to save that knockback in hammer form for the perfect moments, you need to work out how to use that attack speed steroid in your W perfectly and there's just so many things you need to learn to master this champion even from as early as the lane phase. If you haven't seen a top quality Jace master in action you are seriously missing out as it's pretty awesome to watch. In the number 22 spot we have Caitlyn. Everybody thinks that Caitlyn is a piece of cake to play and to a certain extent they aren't wrong. Caitlyn is very easy to pick up and learn because you just auto attack and wave clear and snipe enemies down with your ultimate. However, the actual skill ceiling and potential of this champion is insanely high. The combos you can pull off with your traps and nets and empowered autos seriously does take some practice. The extra range that these provide, the burst, the combos with your Q as well as cancelling animations and CC, there really is a lot more to think about when mastering this champion than you may initially think. Trap placement is probably the biggest thing though. If you use these well enough throughout every single fight, predicting enemy movement, timing them around CC, it's actually amazing how much more damage and self peel you can gain from this tiny little ability. Caitlyn Masters are not as common as they used to be, but if you do come across one, you'll instantly know what I'm talking about. In the number 21 spot we have Fiora. Now not too many people will need me to explain too much about this one. Fiora's outplay potential is absolutely insane, and her kit is pretty much designed around it. You've got very high mobility in your Q to dodge incoming attacks and abilities, you've got auto attack resets with your E, you've got your ultimate to pop, burst and heal, and potentially 1v2. And then of course the biggest outplay tool at her disposal is that W. 
This parrying ability has so much to offer. You can use it to block big damaging abilities, counter CC, and even flip it right back to your enemies and CC them instead. It is pretty mental how much this champion is capable with the right pilot, and there's not going to be many times you won't see her included in videos like this one. We're at number 20 already, and this one is going to go to Zed. When Zed was released all the way back at the end of 2012, he was a really well designed and very modern League of Legends champion, and he instantly became a popular favourite amongst a lot of players. Mastering Zed is all about mastering the shadows, and threading those shurikens together alongside your W and your ultimate and bouncing between the two to maximise your damage and mobility and avoid any retaliation. Z1 tricks are very scary to play against, and despite Zed not being as dominant as he was back in the day, a good one is still very difficult to beat. From quick and nasty combos to extremely high mobility and unpredictability, Zed is a great champion to master if you do enjoy him. Number 19 goes to Vayne. Perfecting Vayne is mastering the ability to auto attack. Well, if only it were that simple. Vayne is all about kiting and tumbling around the battlefield, tearing down enemies' health pools with those silver bolts and dodging any attempts to shut her down. It is pretty damn enjoyable when you are playing late game Vayne, and you can feel a bit of a god if you manage to pull it off. However, due to her average range and squishy AD carry nature, it is a lot harder than you may think. When you get good at Vayne, you might be able to stomp players pretty easily, but the higher rank you go, the harder it gets because of how easy you are to shut down if you get caught out by one misstep and one wrong ability. Against the top players, Vayne is very difficult because of this, and because of how hard it is to get through that super vulnerable lane phase without getting focused down in 2v2s and by the enemy jungler. Vayne's obvious weaknesses are all still very punishable even to this day, and that means mastering Vayne is also learning about how to overcome them and play to your strengths instead. In the number 18 spot, we have Aurelian Soul. Who? No seriously, I cannot remember the last time I saw this champion in one of my games, but every time I have seen him over the years, they're always called ASOL 3000 with 2 million mastery, and they just 1v9. This champion is criminally misunderstood and underplayed, and a large part of that is because he's very unique and very difficult to learn. However, the more hours you have with this beast, the better he gets, and if you can master him, he just becomes an incredibly strong champion. The AoE burst, the consistent damage output, the mobility, the roaming, and even his survivability can all play a part in his potential. But he's definitely not for the faint of heart. I wonder if he'll ever change from such a niche pick, but all I know is I think the ASOL community one tricks probably would rather keep him as he is, because his win rate and his stats for the select few people that do play him has been really impressive for quite a while. In the number 17 position we have Bard, and arguably one of the most enjoyable champions and mutually respected picks in the entire game. Getting stomped by a Bardmaster is not even that offensive and sometimes you just have to sit back and give your enemy a round of applause. It's not quite the same as being slapped by a pike, that's for sure. Bard's outplay potential is immense and his kick creativity is up there with some of the highest in League of Legends. Mastering Bard is truly all about understanding all of the different ways you have to influence games and improvising on the spot throughout all stages of the game and working out how to really make the difference with your versatile abilities. Bard's ultimate and magical journey can be used in so many different ways, and the only way to fully understand this is just to have a stupid amount of hours and games on this champion. The more you play him, the better he gets, and as a side product, you'll probably really enjoy League too. Number 16 goes to Irelia, and I just don't think there was a way that we could not include her in this video. Irelia Masters are pretty horrific to play against to say the least. They've got all sorts of ways to dash around the rift, outplay you, dive you, and stay alive at the same time. She is pretty difficult to learn in general, but she's without a doubt even more difficult to master. You've got those mechanics and combos to learn which do take some practice, but then you've got to master all those matchups and how to actually impact games even if you're fed, because in teamfight she's not actually that good. You gotta know how to farm super efficiently, you gotta fight inside mini waves around your passive, and you just gotta really maximize every little inch of your kit to actually make her good enough. Watching a good Aurelia player is pretty eye-opening. Honestly, their APM must be through the roof, and they are definitely rewarded if they can pull her off. Number 15 goes to Gragas, and another one of those super fun champions that most people just love to play. There's very obvious reasons why Gragas is so difficult to master with the sheer volume of combo variations that this guy has. Knocking people into barrels left, right and centre, bursting enemies in AoE with some big flash engages, animation cancelling, hidden barrels and all that other funky stuff too. Then you've also got the fact that Gragas is fairly difficult to impact games on sometimes as well. He's very much a spacing and timing based champion, and he's all about jumping in and out of combat around his cooldown and around his teammates too. Whichever role you play Gragas in, he might be fairly easy to learn in the first place, but mastering him, his combos, his playstyles, his impact and everything else does take a lot of time. If you do put those hours in though, you'll definitely see the rewards. In the number 14 spot, we have Thresh. When he was released back in the day, he just revolutionised that support role, and he had one of the most complex and advanced kits for his time back then. 
The potential you had with all those different tools was insane. And although League is a very different game now, this guy still has a hell of a lot to offer. From predicting enemy movement and mobility with those hooks to the perfect flays, clutch lanterns, AoE CC, there really is so much he has. And the funny thing is, you can land a few hooks and still lose the game, because mustering Thresh is not just about highlight reels, it's about consistency. You have to be perfect with everything you do to make him truly effective, and this really does take some serious practice. Learning zoning, learning Q ranges, holding for your Q threat instead, timing for those lanterns, your positioning with them too. There is so many little things that you have to learn and you're probably only going to learn them by playing a massive amount of games on this champion. Fortunately though, you're probably going to have a lot of fun along the way. Draven is going to take the number 13 spot and he's just all about those axes. The biggest part of mastering him is basically just perfecting catching those axes, abusing that W steroid and destroying lanes to the point of no return. There's a reason why most good Draven players are high elo, and that's because this champion is so effective when he's actually played correctly. It's all about understanding Draven's limits, terrorizing enemy bot laners, and stomping and snowballing with that bonus gold passive from catching those axes consistently. Draven is the ultimate stomp or be stomped champion, and he's only really good when he's in the lead, so mastering him is also learning how to avoid getting behind and how to make sure you always get ahead. Fed and skilled Dravens are pretty damn terrifying, as I'm sure you're all aware, but if you haven't tried them and mechanics are one of your stronger qualities, you should definitely give them a go. We are over halfway now guys, and in number 12 we're going to give to Rengar. Everyone's favourite jungle pick that everyone thinks they can play, but in reality most people are just bang average on him. He's got a fairly unique kit, he's got a unique playstyle, and even just learning Rengar can be a bit of a chore, but then when it comes to mastering him, it can take a very long time. Mastering Rengar means perfecting playing around that passive, being able to leap and keep on the move permanently, utilising those brushes and your ultimate to maximise your survivability, because without your passive, you'll just waddle around like a cat with no legs. <laughs> Alright, calm down, calm down, I was only joking. <laughs> then you've got those burst combos, the CC combos, the self-peeling combos, you've got insane damage, you've got a cleanse and a grey health heal, you've got a root, and there's so many things to think about. However, the real key to mastering Rengar is learning about how to use all of these things in the heat of the moment in all those different types of situations. Prioritizing different empowered abilities, using your passive perfectly along with your flash, the flexible and versatile itemization options in certain matchups, the list really does go on and on with this champion. Pike is going to take the number 11 position in this video and I'm sure you've all seen those Pike one tricks online at some point or another. Pike's kit is fairly simple to understand, but playing him and learning him is a task in itself. If you miss your Q, you can get easily punished. If you waste your E and you have no flash, you're probably going to die. If you miss your ultimate, you might be completely useless for the rest of that fight. You've really got to learn how to use all of your abilities well enough in the lane phase to make sure you aren't irrelevant, as most supports don't really have to do too much to outperform you too. In team fights, you've got to make picks, you've got to peel, you've got to catch out enemies and look for those big ultimate resets, all of which whilst keeping an eye on your positioning and keeping yourself alive, which is more difficult than you may think. All of those reasons already, and that's not even mentioning the combos you can do with your E, your ultimate, your Prowler's Claw, your Q and E together, the big triple stuns, there's a load of different mechanics you need to learn to master this champion. And even if you do get good at him, some of his combos and mechanics you'll use so rarely, but you still need to know how to do them for when the time is right. Let's move on into that top 10 now, and we're back with another AD carry in Callista. Just learning this champion is hard enough as it is. She's incredibly unique with the mobility with each auto attack, and honestly picking up her in the first place is a bit of a task. Once you've learned her, you already feel pretty cool, but mastering her is another thing altogether. There are infinite amounts of things to think about when playing Callista perfect. The constant mobility, the perfect movement, the burst damage with your Q and your rend, the rend resets, the ultimate's versatility to peel for yourself or your support, or to engage, there are a ton of ways you can use this champion. And you honestly just learn something new every day when you're playing her. Number 9 goes to Yasuo. The hardest part about mastering him is not going 0-10 and rage quitting in the first 10 minutes. Jokes aside, as broken as Yasuo can be in the right hands, the majority of the player base just completely int with this champion, but that's only really when it comes to learning him. Learning how to lane with him and how to pull off his basic all-ins and combos are fairly simple to be honest. However, mastering him is a completely different ballgame. The advanced Yasuo combos are some of the hardest ones to pull off in the game. Ones like the Beyblade, the Airblade and the Keyblade, all of which by the way we do have videos of on our website, so here's another quick reminder to click that link in the description and see them for yourself. So aside from just spamming your ultimate when you have a Diana on your team, Yasuo can be insanely difficult to teamfight with. You're essentially a melee AD carry with a ton of consistent damage and burst and outplay potential. However, you're also very easy to take down if you do miss position even for a second. You gotta weave in and out of fights with those auto attacks and cues, time your win wall perfectly and look for those massive ultimates in the perfect scenarios. Whether it's split pushing and taking on multiple targets or landing huge AoE ultimates in team fights, Yasuo Masters go from the ability to 1v2 to the ability to 1v9. In the number 8 position we have Gangplank and this guy has been everywhere in season 12. He has been a bit broken to be honest, but his win rate does not reflect this at all, as he's actually only good when he's being played by someone who really knows what they're doing. 
Learning Gangplank can take a bit of practice, but the basics of his kit aren't actually too bad. However, when you start thinking about his barrel combos, you go from clued up to clueless pretty quickly. There are a ton of ways to use Gangplank's barrels throughout games to deal a monstrous amount of damage, especially when paired with your ultimate, but they aren't always that easy to pull off unless your enemies walk straight into the path of them. Mastering Gangplank is all about perfecting his AoE damage potential and utilising your Flash and your Q alongside your E to carry teamfights that didn't even seem winnable in the slightest. Then you've got the perfect timing of your W's cleanse and heal to negate incoming CC, you've got those ghost barrels and everything else that goes along with them. Another thing about mastering Gangplank 2 though is actually being super efficient and farming and scaling as optimally as possible. Those silver serpents are super important to upgrade your ult and in the late game with 6 items and a fully upgraded one, you're going to be pretty damn hard to beat, especially if you've mastered him and understand how to deal some pretty serious damage. Number 7 goes to Lee Sin. And this champion has always been one of the most entertaining champions in the game to watch. Despite what people think, he's not actually that difficult to learn at a basic level, and you can easily play this guy as an average one. However, being average at Lee Sin is not going to win you too many games, as if you play literally any other jungler at the same level, you're probably going to be 100 times more impactful. Mastering Lee Sin, on the other hand though, is making those combos flawless. Obviously you've got those big insect moments in crucial teamfights, you've got AoE CC potential with your kick flash, and you've also got various dueling and burst combos, and an insane amount of mobility and movement potential too, which really means you can push your character to the limits when you have perfected him. Understanding all these different ways to use your abilities makes Lee Sin so much more impactful in games, and his skill ceiling is definitely up there with some of the highest in the roster. Lee Sin is a champion that will always be playable in the right hands, even if he's in a bit of a rough spot, which is kind of the case at the moment. But if you are good enough, you can still make him more than viable. Oh, and by the way, he's a lot of fun too. Zoe comes in at number 6, and she's up there with some of the craziest champions in the entire game. She has a very unique kit and can be a bit tricky to learn initially, but once you understand the basics, she's actually not too much trouble. When you start realising the potential of this champion though, you constantly find that you surprise yourself with just how much you're capable of. You have an abundance of ways to create picks and burst your enemies down, but it's truly utilising your W and all those different summoner spells in spontaneous scenarios that make you almost unplayable when you're in the zone. You can blink and flash around the teamfight, sleeping enemies, bursting them down, all whilst being impossible to get hold of because of your mobility. Another reason why Zoe is so difficult to master too though is that it really takes a lot of games to work out all her different playstyles and all her different matchups. There are quite a few different team comps and drafts that make you need a lot more practice. Zoe is definitely one of those one trickable champions, and the higher mastery you have, the better that she gets. As we head into the top 5, we're going to start off with Katarina. Katarina is without a doubt one of the scariest champions in the game to play against when she's fed, and when she's being piloted by the right player. All it takes is one roam to the bot lane and a double kill, and she'll just snowball and roll over the entire game, which I'm sure you've all seen plenty of times. Katarina is not too complicated when it does come to learning her, but mastering her is an entirely different subject. I mean, Katarina has, in recent years, had one of the highest win rates in Grandmaster and Challenger, and that's because the best Katarina can just feel impossible to play against. Even in those top, top elo brackets, people still struggle when she's in control, and if she gets fed, it's just going to be a FF15 and go next a lot of the time. Mastering Katarina is all about maximising your damage alongside your mobility and keeping yourself alive whilst taking down targets and blinking your way around the rift, dodging every single ability thrown at you. Again, like Zoe, you've got to learn a lot about matchups too, and due to the fact that you're melee, you're going to need to know exactly when your windows are to win certain matchups without just getting punished and permanently shoved in. If you can learn all of these matchups, mechanics, combos, and limits, you really do have one of the highest skill expressions out of any of the other champions in League of Legends. Riven takes the number 4 position, and she's been up at the top of these lists and these videos since her release all the way back in 2011. Yes, this game has been around for that long. It's hard to believe it, but Riven One Tricks are still dominating games all these years later. There are a ton of different things to learn when mastering Riven. You've got the fundamentals of your Q mechanics, you've got animation cancelling abilities, and all those various wall hops too. Then you've got all those crazy intricate combos with your ultimate too, which just offer so much flexibility. And learning all of these is key to keeping yourself unpredictable and impossible to beat. Perfecting Riven is also about learning how to win games and how to be impactful on her, because aside from just stomping lane and split pushing, she can't just 1v5 teamfights, unless she's super duper fed anyway. Riven has to maximise every part of her kit to keep herself alive in fights whilst dealing huge bursts, kiting with her mobility, healing with her itemization, and just weaving in and out of fights as it suits her in her cooldowns. A highly skilled Riven is very fun to watch, but not too fun to play against, and if you don't shut her down in the laning phase, you're probably going to have a bit of a rough time. Nidalee is going to be the number 3 choice and there are tons of things to think about when playing this champion. Firstly, you've got those mechanics, those burst combos and max range spears to think about, alongside your efficient jungle clear which is a lot harder than you might think. The biggest thing though about mastering Nidalee is her macro and her playstyle. 
She is all about dominating the game by destroying the enemy jungler alongside ganking the entire map and controlling the whole game in the opening 10 minutes. Even if you are a good Nidalee, you'll need to be a fantastic jungler too to actually play this champion perfectly. You'll need to understand the game very well and need to understand how to maximise your champion's potential and completely remove certain enemies from play. Nidalee is one of those champions that can just snowball super fast and just ruin the whole enemy team's day. And if she's not doing that, she's just not even nearly as impactful whatsoever. Nidalee is one of those picks that you can instantly spot a skilled one and tell them apart from an average one. And she's only good if you can truly play her well enough. The number two position is going to go to Azir and place your bets on who you think is going to be in number one. I'll give you a hint, she's better than all nine of her sisters. So Azir is such a unique champion and you just rarely see him being played. And if you do, they're either first timing him and inting or they're an Azir one trick and they just 1v9. There's rarely any kind of in between here. Learning Azir is learning his combos and his Sharima shuffle and all that other lovely stuff. But you've also got to learn how to farm super efficiently, maximize your income and scale as consistently and as often as you can. Mastering Azir though is truly understanding how to actually deal the damage that you are capable of. You can seriously melt teams down consistently over the course of fights if you are positioned well enough to do so. You have the potential to out damage everyone else in the entire game no question, as long as you can keep yourself alive while still being ranged to do so. You gotta learn all of your limits, your combos, your matchups, all whilst being extremely vulnerable and very easy to shut down. If you get behind you're really going to struggle to pump out big DPS numbers, which is truly what Azir is all about. If you've ever seen a high elo Azir one trick in action, watching them destroy entire team fights with a perfect ultimate combo is beautiful to see. So hopefully this video encourages you and a few more people to learn him and master him so we can see that more often. Okay guys, well that brings us to the number one spot, who we feel is currently the hardest champion in the entire game to master, and that's going to be Kiana. Now that she's not quite as broken and you don't just need to know one burst combo to snowball your way to elo inflation, Kiana takes the mantle of the hardest champion in the game to perfect. Improvisation and versatility is all what Kiana is about. You've got to learn all those different ways to use your elements in the right situations, opting for damage, CC or survivability. You've got loads of different ways to use your ultimate from bursting down carries, fighting over objectives, engaging on enemy teams and just keeping yourself alive too. Kiana's combos are insanely complicated and pretty damn flexible too, and there's a huge variety of ways you can string your abilities together to outplay your enemies. Learning all of these combos takes a huge amount of hours, and if you're trying to master Kiana, we definitely recommend spending a good bit of time in practice mode, especially if you are a fan of Prowler's Claw. Dashing in, bursting down your enemies, dashing out, keeping yourself alive with your invisibility, diving your enemies on repeat, influencing teamfights with that ultimate, there's so much that this champion is capable of, and that's why she takes the number one position. Well that's going to bring us to the end of this top 25 hardest to master champions in League of Legends in season 12. We hope you agree with our choices and more so we hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you to everyone for supporting our channel recently and our content and we really do appreciate it and we enjoy making this content for you all. Don't forget to also head on over to our website at mobilitix.gg to see lots of other video content that we make for you guys. And of course all those other champion stats, guides, counters and plenty more useful stuff to help you guys improve. Thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you all in the next one. Take care.